Hey guys, it's your friendly neighbourhood shoe enthusiast, Ed Budd, and I'm back today with a comparative video between the Adidas Adi Zero Pro and the Adi Zero Adios Pro. So these are the two main race options from Adidas over the last year. I get loads of questions from the viewers as to which one's the best, which one should they go for? Should they opt for the lower to the ground Adi Zero Pro? or go for the highly cushioned Adi Zero Adi Ospro. Let's get into the comparison. A few stats for you first. There was some interesting stuff I found once I got my measuring tape out. Not a lot of weight difference between these two shoes. I own them in a UK size 11 and a half, which is a US size 12. The Adi Zero Pro is 275 grams, which is 9.7 ounces, and the Adi Zero Adi Ospro is 279 grams, or 9.8 ounces. So just a fraction of a difference between the two shoes, with the Adi Zero Adios Pro being slightly heavier, but it's barely noticeable. Though, when I measured the outsoles, so in terms of width at three different positions, there are some different results. In the widest part, in the midfoot, both shoes are 11.5 centimeters, but in the arch is about a centimeters difference between the two. The Adi Zero Adios Pro is much narrower. That one comes in about 6.5 centimeters, where the Adi Zero Pro is 7.5. There's a similar story in the heel with the Adi Zero Pro being 0.5 of a centimeter wider. Let's start with the upper first. Upper wise, we've got to say here, there's not an awful lot of difference between these two. In fact, I think it is the same upper. There's barely a difference between the two shoes. That crafted cellar mesh is fantastically foot fitting. And I gotta say, in my humble opinion, one of the best so far in 2020. I mean, there's a few weeks left, right? What I found with these shoes is they take on very little moisture at all in the upper. That's a good thing when you live in the UK. That innovative one-sided gusset tongue design is also a really great innovation. I mean, that solution's just been staring us in the face for ages. Why hasn't anybody implemented it? It does feel like the shoe's kind of hugging your foot. I think one of my pet hates about many running shoes is the lack of lacing options that they present. Occasionally you might get a few extra eyelets and things like that, but that's where both of these shoes really come into their own. You can have hours of fun relacing the shoe to see if you can get a slightly better lockdown. I haven't done that, by the way. That will never be a problem again, though, if you own one of these two shoes. You can lace to your heart's content. So those extra eyelets, you know, give you the customizable fit and also weight relieve the upper a little bit. I had to say it. A bit more ventilation, maybe, as well. I'd say these shoes aren't really ones for someone who need a very solid heel counter it's not solid at all in fact there's barely anything there apart from this overlay so don't expect some sort of wadge of plastic there like you would get in an asics shoe for example a very refined and high performance upper on both of these shoes they're the same so it's got to be a tie midsole now big midsole big difference that squashy and very compressive light strike pro material in the adi zero adios pro really can't be compared to what we've got in the other shoe here we've got light strike that wraps around the boost. It's not light strike right through. I think they're very much using the light strike here to wrap the boost and perhaps increase its longevity. I guess it's similar to what we've seen in the Yeezy line of casual shoes from Adidas. I mean, it's very clear to see that the boost stretches up through right to here at least. So very different feeling midsoles here even though the weight is almost exactly the same. So the first shoe to use a Light Strike Pro here in the midsole, I'd suggest it's not too firm or loud in its implementation here. After some decent miles, I've found that the energy rods here work better and better every time. The midsole starts to open up a little bit and those energy rods power up a little bit like ACDC's new album. I found they make for a very propulsive ride. Around about seven minutes, 15 seconds per mile, they really start to come into their own. The midfoot's the area you wanna live in with this shoe to get the most out of those energy rods. I felt at lower paces, when I've done some recovery stuff in between faster efforts, that the overly compressive nature of the heel really wasn't for me. I think this is one for those only with experience in higher stack shoes. I think for people who prefer a lower stack height, you'll wanna go for the Adi Zero Pro. I think that implementation of the different technologies here from Adidas, the carbon plate, the boost, the light strike, and the different 
levels of rubber here really do elevate it away from some of those cookie cutter carbon plate shoe implementations that we've seen over the last year. We've seen some real misfires and some direct hits in terms of those carbon plate shoes. I mean, look at the React and the plate in the Zoom Fly 3, for example. That just didn't work. That side, the Zoom Fly Flyknit worked really well, but I'm sure that React was different. Maybe it was down to the upper, I don't know. I didn't really work out too well with the Carbon X, but certainly the carbon plate implementation in the Endorphin Pro was a real success. Adidas have used a different plate here, which flexes only to a certain point in a certain area. So the foot still needs to work, but it adds a little bit of rigidity where needed. Hopefully that's minimizing the risk of certain muscles or tendons in the foot becoming unused or perhaps untrained. I think with those overly rigid carbon plates that could start to become a problem. And that means that this is a shoe you can use on a more daily basis. I think that's why I like it so much. I mean, this shoe may not carry the hype, but Adidas have got other shoes to do that. I think this is a horses for courses situation, and as such, I'm gonna call it a tie. Outsole now, and again, we've got a totally different setup. Three types of Adidas rubber here on the outsole. Almost like a sandpaper type application of the rubber here in the Adizero Adios Pro. I think if you run on a more varied terrain, then the Adizero Pro is gonna be a better outsole for you. A tad more traditional here, and a lot more versatile in terms of the setup. The Adizero Adios Pro is certainly a road shoe, and that's its sole purpose. Sorry, I had to put that one in. The rubber here is like beast's tongue in terms of friction. On concrete, asphalt, and tarmac roads, it really is the king. But it provides very little grip on anything else. And there's quite a bit of exposed Light Strike Pro foam here, which could be in real danger. Definitely gonna keep this one away from the gravel. In terms of outsole though, if you're gonna get some more use in the shoe, I think that the Adi Zero Pro takes it. We're on to value now, and there's not an awful lot of difference in terms of cost for these two shoes. There's about 10 earth credits difference between the two, with the Adi Zero Pro being the cheaper. Although I'd suggest that this shoe's really tough to find anywhere right now. I know Kafuzi's been after a pair and just can't find one for love nor money. It's nuts to think people paid loads of money on StockX to get hold of this shoe. And yet at retail, it's actually about, what's it, 160, 169? It's not bad really for a top end marathon shoe. Off the bat though, I'd suggest that the Adi Zero Pro has got a much broader appeal. You could just use it for a lot more. A more conventional shoe with a more user-friendly midsole stack. Those looking for the top performance though in the marathon or perhaps half marathon distance will be no doubt very excited to try out the Adi Zero Adios Pro. Although it's got a slight weight penalty against some of the other top line contenders from other manufacturers, that stack height could be a bit of an issue for some people. I haven't found this one overtly unstable underfoot. Didn't notice perhaps the stack so much. Maybe I've just got used to it. I mean, the TC from New Balance is a more unstable shoe in my opinion, but this is a shoe that you can use on a daily basis for training. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel overly rigid underfoot just feels good at all paces long runs tempo efforts i mean you could run some easy miles in this too it doesn't feel that weird to do that a swiss army shoe something like that and you often see these discounted quite a bit as well over here in the uk i've seen them as low as about 120 129 perhaps more durable over time as well we don't know how light strike pro is going to work out over the miles that tried and tested continental rubber addy wear here back in the heel tried and tested setup i think for value right now the addy zero pro is the better bet so those are my views on the two shoes no doubt a lot of people are excited to try this one out but kind of have a soft spot for the Adi Zero Pro. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you. Hey, it's Friday and everybody's getting ready for the weekend to relax a little bit. So a slightly more humorous one today. A while back, I bought a bizarre album, which is by William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy. It's called Spaced Out and it's a collection or compilation of some of their best tunes. Yes, these guys had a relatively successful music careers. William Shatner's tracks are more spoken word deliveries, but Leonard Nimoy can hold a tune. I particularly like Leonard Nimoy's version of Where Is Love. It's very, very odd. And I really like A Visit to a Sad Planet as well, where he's in the Spock persona, talking about a planet that's been ravaged by destruction. There's just one person left 
and he finds them and you realize that that planet is earth he does a version of i walk the line as well the johnny cash track and everybody's talking as well which is yeah you got you got to listen to this stuff to believe it the best of all though is the unhinged william shatner version of mr tambourine man where he cries out mr tambourine man Mr. Tambourine Man! If you can track this one down, I think it was originally put out in about 1997. It's worth listening to purely from a comic sort of perspective. William Shatler and Leonard Nimoy spaced out. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video today, guys. Hope you've been enjoying the content recently. If you're new to the channel and you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when we launch those new videos. It helps the channel out massively as well. Can't stress this enough. If you give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.